I went outside, big deal. And I went outside in my pajamas and my fleece moo moo thing, which is also a big deal because you don't really leave the house in Paris in pajamas. It's not a thing the way it is in LA, for example. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up. Happy 2024. It's kind of crazy that we are just a week in to this new year because honestly, it feels like we're already in March. The whole concept of resolutions is definitely a marketing ploy, kind of like Santa Claus, which I do believe in because he's real. But I do still like the idea of taking a pause and reflecting on the previous 12 months and almost always being surprised by actually how much got accomplished. And I think that's one of the reasons that it's important to document where you're wanting to go and the milestones that you're wanting to hit. Because if you're anything like me, I, as soon as I accomplish something, I dismiss it. And I'm immediately thinking about the next thing that needs to get accomplished. And it very much devalues the achievement, the success, the growth. You don't have to have changed careers or bought a new house or lost 40 pounds or whatever it is. It can be something as small as finally organizing that cabinet that drove you nuts every time you opened it or finally making that recipe that you always wanted to make. My mom, when I was growing up, baked an apple cake every Christmas. It was so delicious and it's a big effort. And for a few years now, I have wanted to attempt to make this cake, but you need a spring form pan. It's not something that's that easy to find in Paris. And I did finally accidentally run across one uh, in a store in Boulanger. And so in the back of my mind, uh, leading up to Christmas, I had the idea that I wanted to make this cake. So I got the ingredients, I glanced at the recipe and purchased all the ingredients and then set out a day to make this cake. Unfortunately, I have no recorded proof of this fiasco, in part because I think I knew it would probably be a fiasco. I realized that I'm not a baker and I'm not a good planner. It turns out that when purchasing ingredients for a recipe, particularly a baking recipe where you can't really fudge things very much, it is smart to take the list of ingredients with you when you go to the store. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do that. Um, so I thought I had gotten all the ingredients, but in fact, I had not. And there were two ingredients that were missing from my cabinets and my refrigerator when I went to make this cake. One was butter and two was sour cream. Um, also, it is good learning to take all the ingredients out uh, before you start making whatever you're making to ensure that you have them all before you've started. I also didn't do that. So I was about halfway through making the cake. I had all the batter mixed. I had the eggs beaten. I had the flour and the baking powder and body blah all mixed together. And I went to get the butter out of the fridge and realized shockingly that this recipe requires two sticks of butter, which side note is a shit ton of butter. But um, one, Butter doesn't come in sticks here um, and it's in grams. So 
you have to Google and figure out what two sticks of butter uh, means in grams. And then, as it turns out, Google is not entirely reliable because I went to three different sites and each of the three different sites gave me different gram requirements. So I realized that I was gonna need between 250 and 400 grams of butter and I had about 100 grams of butter. And I was, you know, in my uh, pajamas in the middle of the day with the oven heating and the mix mixed. Um, so what do you do when you don't have enough butter? It turns out that you can use vegetable oil. If you have a vegetable oil that is not olive oil, but I don't have any vegetable oil other than olive oil. And I didn't really want my cake to turn into an olive cake. So I actually approached my neighbors, um, which is not something you do here, really. Growing up in the US, it's really common, particularly if you live in a friendly residential neighborhood, to go to your neighbor and ask for ingredients that you don't have. Like, oh, I need to borrow a cup of sugar, or I need to borrow a stick of butter. But here, <laughs> that's, not really, that's not really the case. So I timidly knocked on a neighbor's door and I asked for some butter and turns out they had butter, but there's always a catch. In France, there are two kinds of butter. There is salted butter and sweet butter. So for baking, you want the sweet butter, not the salted butter, because the salted butter is gonna give you more salt than what the recipe calls for. But of course, my neighbors only had the salted butter. And then as it turns out, they didn't actually have butter, they had more like a margarine -y kind of butter. But I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'll use their butter. And then I got to the next ingredient on my list, which was sour cream, and realized I didn't have sour cream and I didn't even have yogurt in the fridge. I thought I'd had yogurt, but I'd actually eaten it the day before for breakfast and had kind of forgotten that I was trying to save it for this cooking experiment. So at this stage, I Googled, what do you do if you don't have sour cream? And it turns out that if you have yogurt, you can turn it into sour cream. But as I just mentioned, I had eaten my yogurt. Or if you have milk and lemon and some other bizarre ingredient, you can make sour cream like on the prairies. Um, but I didn't have any of those other necessary ingredients. So at this point, I admitted defeat and realized I was going to have to leave my house to purchase something like sour cream because other thing, sour cream is not something that they sell here in France. They sell creme fraiche, which is similar to sour cream, but not as sour. Um, but I was like, okay, fine. I will get the creme fraiche. So I went, uh, I went outside, big deal. Um, and I went outside in my pajamas and my fleece moo moo thing, which is also a big deal because you don't really leave the house in Paris in pajamas. It's not a thing the way it is in LA, for example. But I did it because I felt like, you know what? I am American. Sometimes I have to acknowledge that. So I left the house uh, in my pajamas and I went to the little grocery store. There's always in the neighborhood a little tiny little grocery store that usually has just fruits and vegetables and maybe some additional staples. And there's one just on my block. And I thought, okay, perfect. I'll just run down there in my pajamas. Nobody will see me, it's great. But they were closed. Like literally the one day of the year, Fran Prix was open. Turns out it's the only one that's open on a holiday like New Year's Day, which is the day I was choosing to do this all on. So I found Creme Fraiche and since I was there, I ended up picking up butter. I wasn't sure how much butter I had actually already put in. So I kind of guesstimated the amount of additional butter I would need. And I kind of guesstimated the amount of creme fraiche I would need given it wasn't really sour cream. And I also used a sugar that 
it was kind of like a molasses sugar as opposed to a white sugar. Um, and then I cooked it and the recipe said it would cook for an hour and 15 minutes. At an hour and 15 minutes, the entire center of the cake was still batter, basically, had not cooked. So I cooked it more and I cooked it twice as long, people. I cooked it for two and a half hours and it turned out edible and actually good if you're willing to eat raw batter as part of your cake, which I admit I am because the entire, like, Granted, it wasn't the full center like this size that was still batter, but the middle section of the cake was still batter. So when I took it out, it kind of sunk into like a pool of swimming batter, but the rest of the cake was cooked. It hadn't risen as much as it was supposed to, possibly because the baking powder slash baking soda, never quite sure which is which, uh, had been in the cabinet for like a year and a half. So that's, it's possible that it, it didn't work well. And additionally, because um, the cake itself was not like white-ish, it was more brown-ish, which I'm thinking might have something to do with the fact that the sugar was brown. All that to say that my takeaway here is I should not open a bakery in my next life. What do you think? So the nice thing about that baking fiasco, besides the fact that I got to eat a pretty delicious, though catastrophically conditioned cake, was that I was reminded how important it is to reach out and ask for help. <laughs> um, because even though I didn't end up needing my neighbor's butter, it was really nice to remember that they were there and that they're really cool people and that when I cave in and admit my weaknesses, <laughs> I, there are people around who uh, can help out. And that leads me to a quote. I think I may have purchased this myself as a really inspiring statement. It says, traveler, there is no path. Paths are made by walking. And suddenly it hit me as complete bullshit. It's, it's totally unnecessary to have to create your own path. I'm not saying that there's not value to it. If you want to create your own path, if you want to pull that machete out and fly into the jungle, into a place that no one has been, go for it. But for me, at this stage in my life, I'm suddenly like, mm, maybe somebody else should do all the hatcheting. And I'll just take the path that is clean and orderly and safe and doesn't require a shit ton of work to get through, to get to where I'm going. If somebody else has already cleared the path, why the fuck would I go create a new one? First of all, let's minimize the amount of trees that are getting cut down to take the analogy all the way to death. But seriously, we have, particularly as Americans, we have this like mindset that we have to be conquerors. And the more I live in France, the more I realize how misled we have been to buy into that idea. It again, it's another marketing ploy. <laughs> it's, it's a way to ensure that you need to buy a machete because you have to do it all on your own and start everything from scratch and build everything up from the ground roots. And God, you don't, we don't. Here's the truth. We have no fucking clue what's coming in the next 12 months. 
that's the truth. And I just don't give as much of a flying fuck as I used to about the speed with which change happens or doesn't happen. One of my hopes for this year is that I find with this content more like-minded people who I can possibly inspire or at least amuse. Um, so if you're one of them, hit that subscribe button. So it's better to just fucking sit back and relax. It's a funny comfort to take. Finding more joy in the moments that aren't perfect, <laughs> the moments that are still, that still need fixing, that, that, there's, that there's goodness in those moments. This year, if nothing else, I would wish for you the courage to just show up. Not worrying about the how of it, but just the doing of it. With that, I wish you bonne année, bonne santé, and until next time. Gros bisous. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go.